Hey everyone, and welcome to the Uncorked Corner podcast. My name is Bianca. I'm your co-host, PR and marketing professional by day and food and wine connoisseur by night. And my name is Nick, an accountant with a passion for barbecue, beer, and the topic of today's episode, which I'm really excited about, whiskey. Now, if you haven't done much listening in the past, I bring it up about every episode. Uh, Bianca has never been a whiskey fan. I've been trying to get her into it for... Nope years but she's refused so we needed a topic to talk about on this week's episode so i said i know what we're gonna do i'm gonna torture bianca by making her drink a bunch of whiskey i'm excited he's been waiting for this day since our our official opening day i think this is a long time coming so bianca said she doesn't want to release the video tonight because she doesn't want to share the terrible views of her face but if you could see the video, you'd see how much I'm smiling right now because I'm excited for that. Oh, yeah. We'll see. So to kick it off, I want to just start by going through maybe the basic types of whiskey that we might encounter tonight. Um, I don't know what Bianca's brought. I know we've had some whiskey guests on in the past, so I know she should have some at her disposal that we can uh, go through. And I know... Oh, I got a notification. It's loud. And... <laughs> I brought some of my own as well. I always have a few different varieties in the staple. Um, but to break it down, the main ones that we're going to go over are bourbon, scotch, and rye. So bourbon, everyone knows they've heard it. It's uh, probably one of the more popular ones in America. Um, it's uh, one of the common styles. Bourbon, scotch, and rye are going to be probably your top three that you hear. Um, and if you know how to kind of navigate your way through these and what they're all about, you will be able to at least have a little bit of help when picking out ones that you might like. So for bourbon, the special uh, requirements, there's a lot of laws and everything that say what these have to be um, and how they have to be made in order to be classified as bourbons, ryes, or scotches. So bourbon, for example, has to be made in the USA. Um, most of them are made in Kentucky, but that's not actually a requirement, contrary to what some people might believe. Uh, they have to be aged in new charred oak barrels. So that means nothing else has been able to be aged or stored in those barrels before use. And charred just means uh, they actually toast it with some flame on the inside that help bring out some of those woody characteristics into the drink. Uh, bourbon has to be made with at least 51% corn in the mash. The mash is uh, what goes into it that is distilled and turned into the alcohol eventually. Um, it can enter the barrel above 125 proof, cannot be bottled lower than 80 proof, um, and nothing can be added to it except water to reduce the proof and make it a little bit less strong, a little less harsh. Um, you might hear something like cask strength for example, that's something that hasn't been proofed down. That's something that comes out of the barrel, goes straight to the bottle. Um, but there's no coloring, no flavoring, anything like that in bourbon. Rye, on the other hand, can have some of those as long as it's not advertised as a straight rye whiskey. Um, it can be, it has to be 51% rye mash at least. Uh, so that's kind of your deciding factor what makes it a rye, that mash bill. Um, scotch is a little bit different. It's obviously only made in Scotland. Uh, there's a bunch of different little, you know, classifications. There's blends, there's single malts, but um, the basics are that it has to be distilled at, if it's a single malt, for example, we'll start there because I think that's at least what I'm going to be drinking. I think that's what Bianca is probably going to be drinking if you're drinking what I think she is, um, but it has to be distilled at one single distillery. And the only thing that goes into it really is water and malted barley. There's no other uh, ingredients that are thrown in there with it. Um, some of the most popular examples of this, Glenfiddich, Glenlivet, McCollin, for example, those are the common ones you'll see. I know I have Glenlivet 12 double oak tonight. Bianca has Glenfiddich 12 that, I don't know if that's what she's going to be drinking, but I know I've given her a bottle in that past, so she should have that. Uh, Got it right here. <laughs> uh, another popular thing that you might see is blended scotch whiskeys, which might blend different single malt scotches together or just different scotch whiskeys together to make, you know, kind of a desired flavor profile. 
Um, Johnny Walker is probably the most famous name in this game. Dewar's is another one. And then you could get into, you know, Canadian whiskey, Japanese whiskey, goes on and on. Um, there's all different variations and flavored whiskeys and different things you can get. Uh, moonshine, but that's kind of the basics. So now that we've covered those, uh, Bianca, what did you bring to the tasting tonight? I mean, I didn't know what to bring, so I brought everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not far so off. So give either. me a category. Give me a category and I will, we can start and I'll give you what I have. And you tell me what I'm going to try because I, I have no idea. We're going to have to get a drum roll going. Um, did you bring a bourbon? I have uh, St. Liberty's Birdie's Bear Gulch, which is a straight bourbon whiskey. And I have the Liquid Riot Old Port straight bourbon whiskey. And I also have what I'm sure you didn't think I was going to bring, which is this little bottle of Maker's Mark I found that we <laughs> usually only use mixed in other drinks. <laughs> So those are all, I would say, very different from each other in flavor. So have you tried any of those in the past and what have been your experience with them? I mean, I, I have. Yep. Maker's Mark again. I, I Other than in cocktails. I'm talking. Probably straight. wouldn't drink that straight anyway, just, just be, because um, I did try the Liquid Riot bourbon straight. It wasn't terrible. It was not bad. It's. I'm not saying it's bad in flavor. I'm saying, you know, for me, it's trying to get it down. Not really great at drinking liquor straight, as Nick knows. Um, but that was not too bad. I did try that on our podcast live when we interviewed them. So that one I've tried. I haven't tried Birdie's Bear Gulch. I tried their other whiskey when we had the podcast. I'm, mm, oh, I'm blanking on the name of it. Mary's you know. Foregreen, which is the one, one of the ones Foregreen. that I brought to the table here. So I have the opposite one with me right now, but I, yeah, I gave the other one away. All right. So, our mother. <laughs> did, so I want to just go through real quick what each of us brought before we get into any tasting or anything like that. Um, so we can kind of navigate our way through it. <laughs> Bianca is stabbing away at her bottle with a pair of giant scissors. Uh, if you're I haven't been able to right get the, the plastic thing doesn't have that little serrated thing on it ah. so it's like a challenge which one are you unwrapping this is this is the because i tried mary's so this, Got this it. is birdie yeah i tried both <laughs> um uh, also for also for bourbon uh one of the ones that i brought i brought two out here uh, i have a single barrel cask strength bourbon hickory hill um that's one that I haven't opened yet. So I'm actually excited to try this one as well. So we're going to pop that one open. This one uh, might already be a little open. There we go. Not open. Uh, did you bring any rye whiskeys? I know we talked on the phone earlier and it sounded like you had some, a couple rye whiskeys there at your disposal. So I have the Putnam Rye Whiskey, and I have one that I actually have had straight, believe it or not, which is the Rabbit Hole Boxer Grill Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Oh. So there's a, lot, there's a lot out of this bottle. <laughs> I was going to say, looks like you had We've had this for a while. Times. Paul really likes this one. I have actually, when I'm trying to dabble in drinking liquor neat, as they put it in the professional term, I have actually tried this one before. So, and what were your thoughts? Yeah. I haven't had the Putnam straight though. The Putnam is delicious. Ah, That's it uh, was strong. <laughs> so rye whiskeys, strong, I find, like, yeah, overbearing. Yeah, I find they tend to be a little bit more balanced, a little bit more mellow, um, less hot than a uh, bourbon might be. And then that'll bring me to our next category, Scotch which has its own unique profile. If you've never had a scotch, you'll notice a lot of them that you might find, especially some of the blends like from Johnny Walker. Um, some of the different ones have something known as peat. It's that really smoky uh, tech taste that you get out of it. Um, and that uh, is something that you'll find. It's peat is, I believe it's a moss or type of grass that they burn and actually 
uh, it ends up adding to the flavor of it. Um, so I'm not sure. I haven't tried the one that Bianca has there. I'm jealous because I want to try that one too. So which one did you bring to the table? This? Yeah. I have the, I thought we had the same one. I have no. this Glenn Fittich that Nick so kindly gifted us for Christmas for everybody listening. He's a great gift giver. Uh, trying to bully me into trying more spirits. We have the Glen Fittich single malt scotch whiskey. It is their original 12. And I haven't tried it yet, but I will say it comes in a, a beautiful box. It does. That's one. <laughs> Which that's is one always thing. a plus. I love about scotch in general. They always uh very nice packaging, very nice bottles. Um, tends to be, to get some really good stuff, tends to be a little bit more on the pricier side. Uh, which is, I think, why you don't see a lot of young people really drinking scotch. And obviously, you can get some good blends, and you can get some for not too much. So I don't want to say they're all like that. But for a really nice single malt, they definitely get up there. You could probably say that about anything. And I'm sure, I don't know if you brought this one out to the table, but I have a Canadian whiskey here that I brought out too because I didn't have a rye, that, which is surprising because that's one of my favorites, but maybe because I drank them all. Um, mm -hmm. I brought a Crown Royal Probably. instead of Canadian whiskey. Um, and I know you have a bottle of Crown Royal as well, but I don't think it's a regular Canadian whiskey. Which one do you have over there? Did you not? I have the Crown Royal Salted Caramel. There you go. <laughs> which I don't have. I don't know why I'm waving these scissors around like a crazy person, but I don't have it right now. It's in the other room. It's very good. That is one that I do drink straight, but it's also because it has like a sweetness to it. So it's special. It's like not as strong. And I'm sure it's mellowed out a lot. I know. Um, yeah, it definitely Alex is. likes to drink every now and again. We have some of that Jack Daniels apple whiskey, the Apple Jacks there, which I probably like that. I should try it. Yeah. Uh, they also, they make, what do they have? They have Tennessee honey. They have the apple sure they have like a cinnamon fire type one uh they got they're all over but i would say it's about time that we got into drinking some of these and stop talking about them so much because i know that's what the part that i'm excited for and i know that's the part that you're deep down excited for and dreading all at the same time so i will let you start it off which pick your category which one do you want to start with which category let's go like everyday drinking to like more inex or more expensive like occasion drinking which i assume is our fancy scotch that we have so maybe we start with rye go bourbon then scotch so i i like that plan but i wouldn't say price wise because the scotch the both scotches that we drink and aren't what i'm talking about when i'm talking about getting up there in price they are a little bit more expensive and the one they can be had for somewhere around 50 bucks a bottle for a standard 750, which, you know, it's pricey, but for a really nice whiskey that will typically last you a little while, it's not too bad. The reason why I'm going to say start with the rye is that it's the most mellow. And one thing that we've learned talking to all of our fantastic guests before is you don't normally want to start with the most potent, strongest stuff first, because it's hard to go backwards. So I say we start with the more mellow ones and work our way up. So for me, in this case, I'm going to start with the Crown Royal the Canadian whiskey because I've had that one a whole bunch of times and it is more of a definitely a mellow whiskey. Um, it's one that I'm familiar with and I don't think it's going to ruin my palate for the rest of the ones that we're going to try. Disclosure, there's only one bourbon out of the four that I brought over here that I haven't already tried more than once. So uh, nothing surprising here except for that one, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, but your rye whiskey there, let's start there. All right, we'll go with rabbit holes since I've nope. already opened. What? What? You're going with Putnam. You didn't. Okay. You have to give me these instructions. Well, you said you had the point. Putnam. Our fantastic he just, guests. He's not very helpful. Harbor Distillery that... Make. They are fabulous. And we have these lovely Boston Harbor Distillery shots. We glasses. do. I should have it out of the little shot glass, shouldn't I? Yep. Okay. I'm just going to have like a... <laughs> oh, don't worry, because I brought Demon Seed. 
Uh, I didn't bring it in, but it's in the other room. I if you can haven't listened to the it. episode, yes. If you haven't listened to the episode, guys, Demon Seed is Boston Harbor's scorpion pepper, ginger, and maple syrup whiskey, and it is so hot. So if we're gonna you do like a lot. Things, we're gonna do a live case of that totally one at the end. Yeah, we'll we'll do that at the end. Yeah, I'll you go grab. Gotta it. try it. You gotta try it. I've tried it. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to everybody ah. listening. <laughs> There's other people okay. listening. Who are you? Couple, maybe. Oh, One or two. Invited Tim here. Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just laughed into my shot glass and shot whiskey. Wow. In eye. Oh, fun times. Go ahead, Bianca. Why don't you start? No. <laughs> I'll I cry. <laughs> There's the face already. It's here. You know I can't handle this. I need a couple of drinks in me first to be able to drink things straight. So I, I just you you do you try you tell me what you taste because I am still so bad at deciphering in hard liquor flavors. I am not that great at that either. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. And I look to drink I all right. I'm not sitting here drinking these, looking to pull out every little taste and everything. I'm drinking them for enjoyment. I enjoy them. I enjoy the taste. Um, some of them are very clear and some things. Uh, this Crown Royal, for example, definitely lighter, sweeter. Um, it's not heavier, thick in texture. Um, and when I drink it, one of the, I have almost a sweet, like apple-y note. That's what I get. So I am not going to sit here and tell you exactly what grains I'm tasting. I pull all these different uh, tasting notes out of it. I'm not that experienced yet to be able to do that. But we can guide you on more of the flavor profile of the whiskeys, I would say. And Bianca. Okay, what I, I will say, yes, what I will say is from my initial reaction, it has a nice smell. So you know, some are really strong. This actually has a very nice kind of like rounded out, like softer scent. So I, I like that. It seems approachable for someone like me who is still not used to drinking things. Um, and that is, um, that's um, the typical flow that you follow through when you're, you know, tasting things is appearance, nose, taste. What does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? That's kind of, you know, the way that you flow through. So, and as we've, you know, talked about before, it's all the experience and everything. So we're having a good time. We're talking about them. We're chatting about them. So you'll be able to look fondly back on your first time tasting all these wonderful whiskeys. Uh, next, we, I guess we'll jump into bourbon next. I'm going to, before we move on, if you're a rye whiskey fan, that Putnam rye whiskey from Boston Harbor was definitely one of my favorites. I loved it. It was delicious. Um, and it's been a few weeks since I had it. I don't have any more left over uh, to be tasting tonight. I wish I did, but definitely worth picking up if you're looking for a really good rye whiskey. Um, Bianca is still making all sort of crazy eyebrow movements while trying to taste these. It looks like it's trying to work its way through her system. Um, so we're going to keep it mellow moving into the next one. Um, we're going to move into bourbon. I have two. I think you've got <laughs> A few over there. So looking uh, back on the ones that I've tasted before, I know that that birdies tends to be a lot more approachable, a really easy drinking bourbon. So I'm going to have you start with your birdies next. <laughs> that smells nice too. Yeah. That I will nice. say they have, they're very nice smelling. You guys, we started this liquor podcast and food and everything else um, because I just love wine, as you know, and Nick loves whiskey. So and didn't beer. come here with the love for everything. <laughs> we both like beer. That's that's a definite. And I do want and to I shout out too much in this glass. So. Since we're both drinking a bourbon from St. Liberty's right now, how cool the bottles are from St. Liberty. Um, oh, and yeah. you can go back you and hear cool the story behind that. Yeah, I got the cool blue one. Yours is brown and... What was the uh, 
we didn't get to try their rye yet. I don't remember. I think it was more of an orange color, but they're these, uh, I believe they call them tombstone or coffin shape. Um, and I think we're going to end up putting out this video so everyone can see them when we show them. Uh, they got a side label so they can, you know, you can stick them in your shelf and they can face you out and they don't take up a ton of rum. Uh, it's a really, really cool bottle and definitely a pretty one to have on your shelf. Have you tried it? No, and you're not putting this video out. All right. Sorry, no, everybody. We'll, we'll see. We'll decide at the end. If I drink enough, maybe he'll convince me otherwise. That's actually very good. Hey, we found one. I didn't one. even make a face at that one. No, and you That's lit up good. as soon as you tasted it. I knew that was going to be an approachable I, one. I think the ice helps. There is a lot of ice in that glass, I will say. But hey, whatever you got to do to well, get it. I mean, I just it. poured it, so the ice hasn't fully infected it yet. Well, if the ice has been in that glass for however long we've been talking already, I'm sure there's already some water down there. No, I kept drinking the water out of it, so I didn't have the problem. <laughs> <laughs> this is good i like this i would drink this all right all right all right very so, smooth now thinking back to when i was had that one in front of me i don't have it right now but i remember that one being super approachable and i remember saying during that podcast that that was one that I could see, you know, introducing someone that's new to whiskey, give them that one because it is so smooth, it's approachable. Um, and that was sort of, I think the idea behind it. Uh, the one that I'm drinking is Mary's Four Grain from St. Liberty, same company. Uh, this one's a little bit stronger, I believe. Uh, what is the, go ahead and tell me what the proof on that bottle says, Bianca. Is that 80 proof? 87. 87. Yep. So the one that I'm drinking is 95. So it's a little higher, not as big of a difference as I actually would expect based on the taste of the two. This one's certainly fairly approachable too. It's not too bad, but it's more of what I would expect when drinking a traditional bourbon. Um, definitely. It's not sweet. It's definitely not sweet. Like the crown roll was for anyone that's going to plan on going out and they're looking and thinking of something that they might want to pick up. I would expect more of um, a grainy, taste it's mellow it's not too hot which uh, it means it doesn't burn it's not too crazy um for a new person drinking it maybe a little bit more so you might get that but definitely wouldn't think of this one as sweet or ultra approachable if you're looking for a first timer to pick up i would say that bird is probably the way to go and if you're new to drinking it, consider putting it on the rocks because it makes a big difference. And I think I could probably wean myself off the rocks, but without it, I think things can be a little strong, especially when they first hit your, hit your taste buds. So Nick and I will disagree on that. But if you're a noob like me and you need to get used to the flavor, consider ice. All right. I am going to jump to bottle three because this is another bourbon. Um, what else do you have there for bourbons? Oh, nice uncork sound. No. Beautiful. We're going to have to ice. You got the that. vino over there? No, I got the hickory. I oh. have the. I have the um, liquid riot. Yep. If I can open them. There we go. They have a cool cap on this one. They do. They had it on the um, too that I had. I have tried this one before. From what I recall, this was like a little on the stronger side when I tried it. So we'll see. Now, I remember that one a bit. Um, so while Bianca, I'm actually going to let Bianca taste it before I talk too much about it because I don't want to affect what she thinks prematurely. <laughs> um, or I could just so, fool you. Oh, so let's see. Tell us what you're getting out of that. Yeah, that's a completely different flavor than the last mm -hmm. one. Yeah. It's not bad. It's definitely not like super strong. It has a really interesting, like, it's like a sharp flavor on your tongue. 
which I'm curious what it is because it it's like a different feel melt feel as they call it in mm -hmm. spirits as a totally different melt. It's not as soft. It's more of like a tart kind of like hot stand out. I think flavor. they call it in whiskey. I think is that what it is? Yeah, that sort of burn on the okay. tongue. It's like it's hot. That's as it's far as what I've called it. It actually kind of distracts from the overwhelming alcohol taste. I think it actually does a good job of that, but it definitely burns and it gets in your throat. Oh, whoa. Um, what do you so have? I just took your first sip of the uh, Hickory Hill cask drink. And it's completely different on the taste than what I expected on the nose. So um, when I was first sniffing it, I was getting a lot of sense of almost like a oat, like oatmeal kind of smell. And then I tasted it and it had a lot of heat. This is, uh, it's cast strength. So we're talking 113 proof. So dialed up quite a bit from like the bird. Said. <laughs> That's up there. That's a big jump. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a big jump for even from the Mary's four grain too. But on the, in the mouth, on the taste, it was almost back towards, um, the crown royal but not quite it was like you're saying almost tart i'm getting like uh you know where i said the crown royal was apple i guess i have to rephrase that i'm talking like fuji or macintosh like a mellow like sweet apple where this one's almost tart like uh like a green apple or something or i don't know something granny sour. smith Woo. granny smith <laughs> some green grapes green apples are underrated mm. Mm. Yeah, but oh yeah, good though. Ooh, uh, strong. That's a I mean, over a hundred proof is pretty strong. So yeah, yeah. I don't know why I should have why I expected anything less, but okay. <laughs> what else do you have over there? Do you want to get into the scotch yet, or um, do, you wanna, do you have anything else? Do you want to taste? The only other thing I had for regular was the Maker's Mark, but I think we all kind of know what that tastes like. So I don't really think it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's. Taste it, taste it, taste it. Okay. <laughs> I've never had it straight, so I don't know what to expect. I've only ever had it with like mixed drinks and soda. While you're tasting this one, you can fill the air while I'll go grab my demon seeds. We can close with that. The demon seed turns up the heat. We had a, a family, <laughs> we had to have everyone in the family try it because Nick and I, Nick loves spices and I, I like spice, but I only like kind of a mellow amount of spice. And I thought it was absolutely like so strong, so spicy. And Paul, my fiance also felt that it was like the two of us, you should have seen our faces when we tried the demon seed. It was hilarious. I wish we had one of those like, videos where someone was recording us candid just to get our reactions because it was insane and uh we passed it along to the whole family to try and the reactions were across the board just very entertaining so it's a good one just just to try it i don't know if you would ever drink it just neat but they do have some good cocktail recipes for anybody cream, who isn't into spice the cream and demon you can mix it with their maple cream yeah. liqueur and I, I did I was that. Them the Alex story. and I made that, and it was um <laughs> very tasty. But we're not ready for it. What are you drinking now? Maker's Mark. I mean, it's not like really strong, but it has kind of a different flavor. Different? You can say bad if you don't like it. I mean, I don't love it. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't not, I mean, again, let I, me ask you, what thanks. don't you like about it? I don't know. It has like a, pinpoint it. like, I like it in drinks, so I'm not saying I don't like it, but straight, it has kind of an odd, like, like, I don't know. It's different than the liquid ride and the way it feels on my tongue. And I don't think I like how it, <laughs> how it feels. So it must be, I don't know enough about whiskey to say it's, it's not smooth enough. It's definitely like caught me off guard. I'm cheesing from ear to ear right now because I just picked up the favorite bottle oh probably that I have in my house right now. Um, I am 
definitely a scotch guy. Oh, yeah, you're definitely a scotch drinker. Um, so we're gonna get into the scotch. I have. Paul's dad uh, always tries to get me to drink scotch. It's I've never caved. I've well, tried it, but I've never. Have, <laughs> maybe if you have the right ones, you can get into it. And we're gonna do a deep dive uh, for anyone listening that is into scotch or wants to learn more about it. We are eventually gonna do a deep dive, going into some of the different regions and the different types of scotch out there. I don't know enough to talk about it in an educated fashion tonight, so we're not going to go too deep. I don't want to uh, do it any injustice, so stay tuned. We will talk about more as Bianca pours her Glenfiddich 12 and I pour my Glenlivet 12 double oak into my (laughs) High West Distillery glass. You're not supposed to name the other. <laughs> not a great I, fit. I we have had High West before, and it's it is pretty good. I have had that before. Not straight again. I probably mixed it with something. So, what is the main difference? And I think you already covered this between Scotch and the bourbon that we just had. Well, for one, uh, me. Scotch is made in Scotland. Okay. Um, This, the one that you have, as well as the one that I have, are both single malts, aged 12 years. So I think they tend to be aged a lot longer. Um, The bourbons that we had, at least the Mary's four gram was a four year. I'm not sure what the um, other ones that you taste. I know Birdies is also a four year. So in order to be a bourbon, I think a straight bourbon, at least it has to be two years aged so there's less of an aging typically um region as you know from everything we've talked about before is going to affect the taste hugely Uh, i believe in scotch it is malted barley yeah so water and malted barley so you're not going to have corn you're not going to have all you know any other grains or anything in there um and then Definitely Typically. feel it's definitely different on the palate. So what are you getting? I just tasted it. I I cut to the I I tasted it. It feels lighter. Like the mouth feels lighter. Like on my in your mouth, it, it's like feels like a not. I don't want to say like a thinner liquid, but it, it, in a way, it kind of does. Like it is much lighter when you drink it, as opposed to like when I'm drinking the bourbon which I have right next to it it feels like like it's a heavier I don't know I don't know it's a texture thing I guess I I could be crazy you know I don't disagree with you I think scotch tends to be a little bit uh less thick a little less heavy um are you getting what are you getting for tasting notes when you're sipping it is there anything that you can pull out of there not specifically it has like some sharp flavors so I'm trying, I might have to pour another little sip of it because I actually, I don't know. I told you I'm not very good at tasting whiskeys yet. <laughs> Scotch, sorry, wrong name. I mean, it's it's good. Like I could, I think it's good. It's not overbearing. I keep using that word, but that's how I've always felt with hard liquor. But it definitely does not feel like that. It feels like something I could, I could drink on its own. So... I'm drinking, like I said, the Glenlivet 12, a double oak. So um, it's aged in European oak and American oak casks, which are barrels. And we already talked a little bit about this with bourbon, but scotch, unlike with bourbon, doesn't need to be aged in new oak. So you don't get as much of those that would, you know, heavy flavors because it's already been through, you know, Liquor's already been through the wood, kind of pulled some of those flavors out, um, and it doesn't affect the taste of the drink as much. Uh, the amount of times something's been through the barrel before it hits the aging is all going to be decided by the cooper. For example, the scotch, the person that decides what they're blending and what, how long it's staying in there. Um, but in this one, I'm not getting a ton of barrel from it. Uh, what I'm mostly getting out of it is, like Bag said, it's really light. It's got a uh, subtle sweetness. It's not a lot. It's just a really smooth, smooth scotch. Uh, if I had to peg any sort of flavor on it, I would say pear. 
is probably what I'm getting on the nose and the tongue really. Um, but if you are looking for a really mild scotch that doesn't have really any of that peat, that smoke that you might get you know, out of some of the other ones, um, I was curious to hear Bianca with the Glen Fittage. Did you get any of that? Is there any smokiness to it or no? I, I feel like now that you've said that, I could see how, I could see that that being what I was experiencing. Yeah. It was definitely different than everything else that I've had in terms of it, the way that it felt, the way that, the way that it tasted. It definitely was its own kind of feeling. It's very, it's good though. I mean, it's, it's good. I, like I it. hope so. Yeah. It's a pricey Christmas present. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll tell you guys later if I if I'm lying. <laughs> I know you can't be completely honest with me on the other end. Um, well, Paul's dad is uh, he loves his Johnny Walker Black, so that's like the thing they always have. So over that there. so, so that's I have cool. had that many times. That one tends to be a lot more. You're gonna taste the peat in that. You're gonna taste some of that smoke, um, and that's the Johnny Walker as we mentioned earlier is more of a it's a blended scotch so it's not going to have as much region specificity i would say in it um but they've been doing it forever and it's basically they got it nailed and i think they got a certain formula and they know what it's going to taste like in the bottle so if you're into that sort of flavor then that's a good one to turn to um and again not crazy expensive either too so it's an attainable scotch but i wouldn't say it's the most beginner friendly entry level type scotch um the one that i'm drinking the glenlivet 12 for sure i would recommend it because it is more like uh i was getting out of the canadian whiskeys and out of like a rye that you had earlier it's light it's sweet it's uh not really offensive to the palate it's not gonna burn you too bad um so it's definitely a good one to try out if you're looking for a scotch to try to kind of get your foot in the door dip your toe if you will i feel that i need to go back and try the putnam again now that i warmed up i think that maybe because it was my first taste i, I over exaggerated in my reaction yeah i wanted to start with the rye because rye tends to be lower but i do agree that especially after you tasted the birdie the birdies is definitely the most beginner friendly of all of those um so yeah why don't we have you go back and try the putnam while I sip on the uh, Glenlivet, and then we're going to round it out with the demon seed at the end. Woo! <laughs> Ric Flair. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't put it in my eyes now because I have my, I got my birdies in there. Oh, no. You have to go straight. I poured, I poured too much of the birdie. <laughs> put it back in the Boston Harbor shot glass. Yo. I can't hear a word you're saying. <laughs> we got a cube. I said, you can't see it. Uh, I don't think. Okay, here we go. Definitely not as bad of a reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't make any faces, so that's uh, good. You have to I mean, call up Rhonda good. and tell you like it. <laughs> much better over ice again i think maybe yeah. that's just me maybe i needed over ice well it's not a that's not abnormal or to you know instead of if you don't want it cold and you want to kind of keep the temperature but still kind of mellow with the flavor you can add some water in and kind of manually i would say lower the proof of it um make it a little bit easier to drink and digest but there's nothing wrong with that if that's kind of the approach that you want to take to it. If you are going to get those flavors and whiskey's just been too harsh for you forever, then adding a little bit of water, some drops here and there, then it might make it a little bit more approachable. Well, do kind of what Bianca's saying. Try it in a cocktail. Make yourself an old-fashioned. Make yourself, what did we have with cast changes recently? The Manhattans. I almost call this out because we have, we have this and it's pretty good. 
the bully boy distillers old fashioned already mixed up in the bottle. So it's the uh, whiskey bitters and I think it's, is it, a, it's either syrup or sugar. I can't remember it. I don't have sugar, it in front of me. Usually, It's pretty good. And it's, it's, that's how it is. It's like, you're not ready for whiskey because they have great spirits too, but you want something that's kind of like an intro. And I feel like that's a good thing to start with because it doesn't have a ton of ingredients and the ingredients that it has doesn't completely take away from the flavor. So you do kind of get the, uh, you still get the whiskey flavor while also, you know, easing into it. So I'm going to suggest that you drink some water and mellow out for a second here before we go into it. But I think it's getting about demon seed time. What do you think? I think, demon. I don't know if you can mellow out before demon seed. It's just, you might as well just jump right into the fire. Pun but, intended. Hey, you don't want to mix it with all the other whiskeys. You want to be able to taste it for all its glory alone. Again, uh, as we already said before, Demon Seed by Boston Harbor Distillery. It's scorpion pepper, ginger, and maple syrup flavored whiskey. Um, this is not Fireball. This is not your, you know, college no. cinnamon whiskey. This is, it's serious business. There's spice to it. But if you get <laughs> out and you don't go trying to scrape it off your tongue and drink, having too much ice cream and mellowing it out, uh, you do get hit with some of those, you know, that ginger, that syrup, that sweetness on the end makes it all worth it. So, oh, I'm excited. I know I've a already hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> both of us, both of us have already had this before. I'm full of puns tonight. Bianca mm. did not like it as much because it hurt. It burned. Well, so I enjoyed trying it because it was fun to try and it's definitely one of those things so like if people came over I'm like everyone's getting a shot at demon seed you know but it's not like something I would sit down and drink by itself <laughs> just because it's just so it's so strong for me anyway and I'm not a big spice person as I mentioned uh, but it's totally one of those things if I was having like a party and I had a bottle of this stuff I would I'd be pouring shots for people just just like you got to try this you have to try this it's definitely one of those entertaining liquors that it's worth it's worth having around. Definitely. That's the yeah. that's how I first found out about ghost tequila. The same thing. Oh, you gotta try this tequila. It's you know, it's hot, it's ghost pepper, it's ghost pepper infused, it's got spice. Um, and uh that's you know, that's how my introduction to that, but oh she's doing it. Is that the demon seed? Oh no, she's drinking something. No, I'm else. still I'm still drinking birdie. Wow, she really <laughs> likes that birdie. I pour I poured way too much in this glass, but I really like it. I, I think got I that. Could drink yeah. This I poured a bunch a of scotch on myself too, but yeah. You know, after yeah. we got to have a nightcap after the podcast. We're, so. we're getting there. I just see, I just have to do this more often and then we'll, we'll get there eventually. <laughs> anyway, so spice doesn't bother me. So when I had the demon seed the first time and our, you know, our mom, when she tried it the same way, I guess that's where the genes come from. Spice doesn't really bother her either. And she enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So I don't, I don't know if we're crazy, probably, maybe, most likely, definitely, but de I think I'm not dreading this. I'm more excited than Bianca going into it. So without further ado, are you ready? I've stalled long enough. I know I'm trying to give you time to prepare yourself mentally. I'm mentally prepared. The first time I tried it, I thought that she was overreacting and <laughs> oh man, Paul and I drank at the same time because we had we had to see each other's reactions. It was great. Well, the scorp great. the scorpion pepper isn't exactly something to joke about. It's not a uh, not like wait you, you got it you ready? I am gonna put this one in my fancy dancy little doodle bob glass. Um, oh, I have it in my Boston Harbor glass. Well, my Boston Harbor glasses are tainted with all the other whiskeys, so I wanted to give it its own fair shake. This one's I have still a clean. feeling the scorpion pepper draws its own uh, tainting. <laughs> True, but I also think it mixes well with the mischief of Doodle Bob in the Mihoi oh, Doodle Bob shot glass. So, are anybody you ready? knows what I'm talking about, then, then props to you because he had to show me a video as if I you know never watched spongebob as a kid which i totally did but shows well, I, bianca was character. trashing it the whole time and as soon as i showed her the video it brought back all the great memories and she knew exactly what i was talking about and called me immature but 
<laughs> I digress. Let's drink some whiskey, all right? Not untrue. <laughs> Cheers, okay. Bianca. Let's try this demon seed. I'm ready. <laughs> you don't even make a the pepper it's not when you first drink it it's when it hits the back of your throat that it's like woo there it is it just lights up now i feel fine it's fun it's a fun one it is a lot of fun it's also tasty. i cheated and had it on my ice so oh i think it took away some of the heat i went straight it's heat. It's hot. It's got it. But I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I like it. I can, I get more, I get the tingle of the pepper. I'm trying to find a good way to describe it. Where to, first of all, where it touches your lip, as soon as when you're drinking it, the point of my lip where it touches is still a little bit numb. Um, but uh, you get the tingle on your tongue, get the For me, tingle it's in the, your throat. It's the back of the roof of my mouth. Yep, it's, it's like, like a my mouth pins and needles it feeling. The back. You get pins and needles, sort of. Yeah, on the tongue and everything. Uh, but I'm getting flavor wise, I'm really getting a lot more maple syrup than anything else. So if you can get past the spice, I think it's like perfect. I could, uh, you were saying you would never pour yourself a glass and drink it straight. I would 100% pour myself a glass and drink this straight. You also eat a jar of like hot sauce on one meal, so they they're we're different people. Yeah, it's it's I eat an absurd amount of hot sauce. That's I don't why know I where to, you came from. That's why I go to Walmart and buy my thirty two ounce Tapatio bottle. If that's how you I would, they it. would take me like a year to get through that. I mean, that's just insane. To be fair, last time I got that one, it took me a while, but. It's not for the lack of uh, not having enough hot sauce. It's more because I, I have variety. I have a bunch of different hot sauces, just like there's a bunch of different boozes for what you're feeling for different times. I have different hot sauces for different foods in a meeting. And, uh, you know, sometimes I'm feeling sweet, like a habanero. Sometimes I want to go smoky with chipotle. I don't All over the place. But anyway, you don't look like that demon seed affected you too much. I don't know if you had enough of it. You look re I mean, I really comfortable. And, <clears throat> I, I'm telling you, I think it was the ice. And go for another round, go straight. I liked my Arctic demon. Arctic demon? <laughs> <laughs> Cooled him off a little bit. Uh, yeah, chilled him out. You know, it's like that Christmas movie with the two. It's the fire and ice guys. Angel seed. No. No. Still, it's still not angelic. Still, nah. still not angelic. It's like it dulls the flame for a second and then it comes right back. So what do you think, Bianca? This was uh, the first time we've really taken a foray into whiskeys. This was a lot for our listeners to learn about whiskey, a lot for you to be introduced to some different whiskeys that you might not have actually listened to me and tried straight. And mostly for me to see your Fair. initial reaction when you first taste your first sip of whiskey. That was the real reason we were doing this tonight. So that was accomplished for sure when you tried your first sip of Putnam. I'm glad you revisited. It's not, it's not Putnam's fault, you guys. It was good. Right. I'm glad you revisited. <laughs> it was my mental and state. felt better. <laughs> but you were not prepared. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm never prepared. You know, it's like when you take a shot of anything. You're not prepared the first time. And then the second one, it's like, okay. Together. At least now that you've done it, you've had this experience, do you feel a little bit better going forward next time we have whiskey guests to try the whiskey and not seem really anti-whiskey outside of cocktails? Do you think you'll I have, give them a fair shake? I have always tried our guest whiskeys. Do not let him fool you. I you, always try them. Eh, eh, you tried Birdie for the first time tonight and we interviewed them months ago. So no, I tried the one that you have. I tried Mary's on the podcast. Yeah, I tried both on the podcast. So why didn't she give Birdie well, a shot? I was going to open both. I don't know. I opened I, I don't both. Know. It's whiskey. It's not was, like it's going to go was, bad on you. I was, whatever. You know what? I just want to, we should try Josephine's. I'm going to go try to get a bottle. Josephine's? What's Josephine's? Isn't that their it's their middle one? Um, there you mean the rye? 
Isn't it like, yeah. uh, what is it? Saint Liberty. Josephine's Flathead River. There's straight rye whiskey. Josephine's rye whiskey is Saint Liberty's. Josephine's. All right, gonna have to try that yeah. next. Mary, Josephine, and Birdie. I'm excited to try that. So I, I love rye whiskey. So us, I'll bring it to you. I'm sure you can. It's around. I know. I'll find I it. I need to get you a bottle. I think they have it around here somewhere. Are there any honorable mentions, Nick? Since you're the whiskey guy here and I'm not. Honorable that mentions. You normally have that you do not have in front of you. Like ones you didn't taste today, but that you like and would recommend to everyone listening. Yes. That's my answer. <laughs> There's a bunch. Um, one that I was. All right. So, one of my favorite profiles in whiskey. Uh, bourbon specifically is there's almost like a cream okay. a cream vanilla flavor that you can get and the prime example of it is like a Blanton's which is if you've had Blanton's the original um, it's expensive it's hard to find but when you can find it it's worth it um, that one's like the quintessential like that's my favorite bourbon that I've ever tried uh, but if you want similar flavor profile in a cheap bottle, I'm going to say Black Ridge bourbon. Not cheap. It's not like Old Overhalt or Evan, Evan Williams cheap, It's but like middle of the road. Um, it's very tasty. It's light. It's creamy. It says Bianca was saying it's thick. It's heavy. Um, and you get some of those cream and vanilla profiles. Uh, that's one that I would recommend to people. Go pick that one up. Um, what are we going to say here? Let's see. Pig's nose scotch, blended scotch, if you can find that, is a nice one um, for a blended one. Most of these whiskeys I've been gifted from my grandfather. Uh, great gifts. And Question. Yes. Have you had a dickle pickle? I've never had a dickle pickle, but I did have a whole bottle of. Oh, the- we should have done dickle pickles. I had a whole bottle of the made my- dickle Tabasco mm-hmm. and I drank it all but i didn't ever do with the pickle i made my own pickles and i think i need to make myself a dickle pickle with my own pickle juice we can do that let's do it no i can't do it now because it's no i are still I cure I, I many mean, more days we'll do it we'll do oh, a 100 uh, percent. how about this for the future to get all these guests the four people that are still listening really excited about it We're going to do a pickling episode in the future. I'm going to pickle some stuff. I love peppers. I'm going to pickle some. You're so confident in our viewership. I'm going to pickle some pickles and I'm going to pickle some jalapenos. And we're going to do a dickle pickle with our own pickled peppers and pickles. I like it. We're doing this. What's that old uh, Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peppers? What is that? We're going to do that. Whatever that is, let's do it. Um, back to my honorable mentions. Um, Glen Morangy for Scotch, Glen Morangy Ten Original is another delicious Scotch that we didn't drink tonight, but is one that I have at home, and that is another delicious one. Um, rye whiskey. I'm gonna say tough one. Riverboat rye was good. Templeton rye is good, although I had a very bad night when I had way too much Templeton rye one time, and I haven't gotten it since. Um, let's see. Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> every every now and again, you just got to burn it down and have a little too much. You know how it is. Um, what haven't I covered? Not with whiskey, I don't. But other things, sure. Riverboat rye, did I mention that? I think I already just said that one, didn't I? Mm-hmm. High West double rye. That was a good one for rye whiskey, um, which I had in my High West class right here that I currently have my Glenlivet in. Um, what else haven't I covered, Bianca? I haven't tried any Japanese whiskeys. So if you have a Japanese whiskey recommendation, leave a comment. I'll read it. No one else comments. So I'll see it. It'll be the I only believe one this there. is something we talked to Natalie about when we had her on, isn't it? Yeah, but she actually got to travel to all different places and what she had available <laughs> yeah. to her might not be available here in Portland, Maine. 
um but i know i know there's some good ones come out like centauri and stuff and if you search down nika is supposed to be really good um there's definitely good ones that i could find i just haven't made that plunge to go out and try it because as i'm sure you've gathered from this rye whiskey and scotch are kind of my loves for whiskey and i'll always have a bourbon in the table too so that's kind of where i spend my money when i'm looking for a whiskey but I will have to try a Japanese whiskey and give it a shot. Canadian whiskey, I haven't tried anything other than Crown Royal. So no hate. Um, uh, I believe it's a blended scotch. Monkey Shoulder is pretty good. Um, that's a common one, just for one that you can find everywhere. Huh. I don't know. What else we got? Wild Turkey 101. If you want a really cheap, like, probably plastic bottle bourbon, that's going to be lower end price wise but really good taste wise bottle bourbon okay yeah well I, once you get below like 24 dollars, it's plastic you're glad you're really glad screwed glad up. right now huh i like the i like the bottles that's just i am that person i am that jerk that judges the book Listen, by its cover wild turkey store. wild turkey doesn't need any of our help they have enough money so if oh, I sure. call their bottle plastic, they're still going to sell just as many of them. Not gonna <laughs> that's, hurt. that's fair. So it doesn't matter. I mean, like for rabbit hole, for example, has a, has a bunny etched onto its bottle. It's beautiful. And look, it goes around the side. It's, it's a good one. You should try it. It's a good it's one. A, it's a nice bottle. I'll have to try that. It is. It's a cool bottle. I, I personally, like a big thing for me is, you know, as, I spend a little extra for a good liquor, and then you also get the shelf attraction of that liquor. So it's like a win-win. So you spend the extra money, get a better liquor, and you get a decoration. I feel, I feel the same way, but I don't really care as much about the shelf decoration. The look of the bottle doesn't really factor into my decision as much. Um, but I do feel the same about when you spend the, you know, a couple extra bucks or whatever. It maybe oh major major uh honorable mention that i can't believe i didn't already mention woodford reserve original um bourbon yes drink it it's very good that's one of my go-to's when it comes to bourbon um oh fancy bottle that's what made me think of it it's got this really uh kind of wide skinny almost tombstone shaped bottle similar to similar to these uh saint liberties that we were drinking tonight um but yes drink it it's good so bianca where can everyone find us on social media and online and on the interwebs well first i'll say because of this podcast and the overwhelming number of things that we have mentioned we'll have a blog up when this goes live tomorrow uh with all of our when you guys when you're listening it'll be there uh, with all of our whiskey, rye, bourbon, and scotch selects. I hope and, we're not uh, going to go into too much detail because I haven't written anything yet. And it's already 10 o'clock when we're recording this and it's going up. No, we're just going to do listicle. We're just going to do <laughs> like our kitchen gadgets just quick with links and pictures. And you guys can go check it out, find all the different brands, read their stories. Uh, especially some of them are, are pretty interesting. And, but, and okay instead of reading the stories for some of these people you can go back and listen mm. to the stories live you can pre-recorded but live in your ears first time you're hearing it um saint liberties we talked about a ton liquid riot uh we mentioned that old port bourbon that's liquid riot out of here in portland maine um yep Saint. i already mentioned saint liberty boston harbor distilling boston harbor um and more to come so all of these fantastic yep. local brands that you can support local to us here in new England, but available kind of widely over for some of them. So try to find a bottle. You'll enjoy it. You won't recommend it. Uh, regret it. I do recommend these bottles because you won't re regret it. I can't talk anymore. Bianca wrap this up. So anyways, that will be live. Uh, Nick will put the link to our website and it'll be on there. It's uncorkedcorner.com. For everybody who doesn't follow us on social, come and join our community. It's at Uncorked Corner. We're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We're on Twitter. 
We love seeing new faces on all of our pages. We love to learn about you guys and we want to hear more about what you guys want to learn about, whether that's more about whiskey, if that's more food driven, if that's tequila, if that's wine and beer, everything you can possibly think of, definitely reach out to us. We always love to hear your thoughts. So with that, I think that Wait, that wraps wait, this wait, episode and we are excited for some more guests coming up in the next couple weeks. Hold on. I have one more plug on our okay. Etsy shop, Uncorked Corner on Etsy. I designed some badass trucker hats. <laughs> Nick had to go. I designed a whole bunch of stuff, you guys, and Nick went and designed his own trucker cap because I wear a trucker cap every single of. day. And oh, it's so yeah. cool. It's, it's he does every podcast mesh. episode he's got his trucker hat on check the videos it's well documented gray heathered front black oh back. they'll see it they'll see it once it's at your they house will. i bet oh I, i'm gonna be wearing it every episode and you know what i might actually face it forward too so that people can see our beautiful logo i will say i'll start wearing a trucker cap if i have if you have what an uncorked one but I also ordered really cool I, beanies I mean, that we designed, too. I don't know. So if it's cold, you can wear a beanie. All the plugs. All the plugs. Listen, All I don't plugs. even care if we sell. We're, we're getting those, fancy over on Etsy. If we sell none of those, I don't care because I just wanted one for myself. And that's the real reason. We did sell one beanie. We have sold a beanie. But anyway. I yeah, think that's all for tonight. I am looking too, forward. I'm looking yeah. forward to our pickling episode in the future where we do some Dickles pickles. We're going to have to pick some of that up. Um, the yes. Dickle Tabasco. Uh, I might even try to pickle my pickles in with, a whiskey mixture and see how it comes up. Now you're getting crazy. You're getting crazy. I think you've had too much <laughs> of this whiskey tonight. I think we got to sign off. <laughs> People are sick of us. They've already signed off. All right. Thank you, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. See you on our next episode. Bye, everybody.